Joining us now is Kristen Hawkins, president of Students for Life of America and host of Explicitly Pro-Life podcast. Kristen, welcome to the program. Uh, you and I have been texting. Uh, Kristen, right. I, think it's, I think it's fair to say ahead of this announcement, you were a little nervous, uh, but you were pleased generally by what you saw this morning. Please tell our audience about it. Yeah, absolutely, Charlie. And thank you for all of your work on this very important issue. As, as you know, there was a New York Times article a couple months ago saying that President Trump is considering uh, choosing a divisive late term abortion limit as his federal line. And this would have been a mistake for the pro-life movement for decades to come to set up this like European like stalemate on abortion that would have allowed the Democrats to fundraise and try to mobilize their radical base that would have only even if if it's passed, you know, prevents maybe four to six percent of abortions. Um, we need to be very clear with our state elected officials who we've been on the ground students for life action campaign for for weeks now as we're in primary season that we expect them to act and we expect them to act with courage. And so we didn't want to see a 15 or 16 week line, which is this late term limit that the pro-life movement is quite frankly, Charlie, has never been wanting and been working for. I mean, you all know mm -hmm. uh, what our goal is in the pro-life movement to see federal protection of preborn human life from the moment of conception. But we aren't there yet. And I think President Trump made the smart and sound decision today to say, look, states, it, this is your time. This is your time to protect children, protect children, as many children as you possibly can. And this certainly doesn't say that President Trump, it doesn't have a lot of work to do. We are thinking about his appointment for vice president, cabinet secretaries, you know, one of the things the president needs to do swiftly as soon as he's reelected is stop the persecution against 80 year old grandmas who are sitting in prisons right now waiting what we believe will be a 10 to 11 year federal prison sentence for having the audacity to pray in front of Planned Parenthood while squatters take over homes in places like New York City and their homeowners are being arrested. It's absolutely insane yes. what the Biden administration has done to pro-lifers. And that's exactly what he can get started doing day one in eliminating these pro-abortion swamps. Kristen, that was a phenomenal answer. And I agree completely I want to walk through this because there are some very loud voices right now sure. that are saying yeah. Donald Trump surrendered on the issue because he didn't put a weak ban. You and I see it the exact opposite. And there were there was a huge yeah. lobbying campaign to say, hey, draw this line, draw this line. But it almost would have turned it into like the Canadian European model where the fight for life yeah. would have just been completely derailed especially where we're starting to try to make movement in states. So can you add more detail yeah. to that? Because uh, I think that's incredibly yeah. important. Yeah, when you look, Charlie, at Europe and the European pro-life laws, the pro-life movement there has been decimated. They have claimed a false consensus on abortion for decades in Europe, that they, they allow abortions in the first trimester, which we all know where the majority of abortions are committed, uh, and, they, and they prevent largely abortions in the second and third trimester. We did not fight the 49 years of tyranny under Roe versus Wade to establish a European line like, uh, like that. A 15, 16-week limit on abortion fairly would prevent four to six percent of children from being aborted. When we're talking about making strides in the pro-life movement to protect women and children from the predatory abortion industry, we need to be talking, Charlie, about chemical abortions, which are now 63 percent plus of all abortions. President Trump did not exclude states and in fact, what he said today in his statement was that states should and must continue to act to protect human life. And I think there's so much that he needs to do. I think this this statement today keeps the position and keeps the pressure on Democrats who can't name yes. one abortion they disagree with. You know, you think about when the New York Times article came out in February, that rumored that President Trump is going to take a 15, 16 week position. My inbox was immediately fun, like flooded with fundraising emails from Planned Parenthood, NARAL, all of the left capitalizing on this saying Donald Trump's going to ban all abortions, even though uh, a late term limit would only ban four to six percent abortions, fundraising, using it to, to build up money, to build up their base. Today, 
Planned Parenthood has been radio silent. They have, they're not saying anything. My inbox is largely just mm. filled with pro-lifers today. Um, so that tells you he very smartly did not play into what they wanted him to do. Now they are going to have to go on defense and prove to Americans why they supported abortion up until the moment of birth with taxpayer funding for any reason, yes. while we do the hard work in the states of protecting human life. And if he would have said a 16 week ban, it almost tacitly says, like, I'm OK with abortion up to that limit. That's right. right. That's and, right. I, and, and and it would have kind of it would have taken the wind out of a lot of our sales that are That's in right. states trying to do this. And I also just want to I want to talk about, um, you know, the the morality of the topic. A lesser part of his statement that was not mentioned is he was like, we love babies. We love life. We love families. And some people say that goes without That's saying. Right. But contrast that with the pseudo cult of death that basically is Planned Parenthood. I, I thought it, I thought it was brilliant. I mean, I think that line was very important, and it wasn't just a throwaway line, as you just mentioned, because Democrats are really good at destroying things. You know, you talk about this every day. They've destroyed our yes. economy, um, and the, they des destroy our national border security, our national defense, and now they want to destroy, and they've been very clear, they're out to destroy the family, particularly the nuclear family, and destroying babies while they're at it. Um, there is so much the president can do, and I actually appreciate some of the positive affirmation statements he made in, yes. in, in his uh, statement today because what you know the op-ed I had yesterday in the town hall I literally listed out in detail what the president can do beyond just the appointments we're talking about so much we need to do policy-wise and you and I've talked about this Charlie before 73 to 75 percent of Americans don't know pregnancy centers exist they don't know all of the all of the good the pro-life movement does and all the resources that are available. So abortion truly should be an unthinkable option. Ending abortion is a very, very complex question. It is not going to be ended just with our laws. It also has to be ended with our culture. And that yes. starts with transforming the way families and mothers in crisis think about uh, an unplanned pregnancy and know that they have support and options for them. So I thought there was a lot of good to come out of statement. Of course, the pro-life movement is uniformly in agreement that ending abortion is a federal issue because your state lines should not determine when your human rights begin or end, of course. And that is our ultimate goal. That is what we are working towards, either a 14th Amendment protection or another human uh, human life amendment approach where we see all children protected. But in the meantime, we can work with this. With the math I've got in the U.S. Senate, I mean, most of our lifers are homeschoolers. We can count. We know we're, we don't have 60 votes in the Senate right now. This is a statement that we can work with to excite pro-lifers across America to say, President Trump, he is still with us. He is still pro-life. And look, if yes. we do not act now to donate, to get involved, to sign up to volunteer, to stop the Biden administration, we are going to have four more years of the most pro-abortion radical administration we've ever seen in the history of America. I, I love that. And it's so realistic. And it's where it's also the other part of the statement that I want to emphasize is he didn't apologize for putting the justices to get rid of Roe is that okay. he leaned into it. Can you talk about that, Kristen? Because a lot of people I know were saying, you got to stop bragging on this. And he's like, you know what? No, you know, this was a bad decision. I want to, th he thanked the justices by name, did, by the by way. by name. Uh, and I, I think that was, he kind of just told the other people whispering in his ear, no, I'm proud of that. And he should be proud of that. It mm -hmm. was a, it was a landmark achievement. He absolutely should be proud of that, Charlie. And I think that, to me, that statement where he, reaffirmed his you know victory in reversing Roe I think what that proves is that we're going to see more pro-life judicial appointments from a second Trump administration mm -hmm. uh, and that's what the pro-lifers need to hear because to be honest with you and you know this we have been betrayed by GOPers before yeah, and that's exactly what was happening here and what he was being told by a lot of those GOP insiders to tell him to backtrack on his pro-life statements. And I think that was him very clearly telling us he is still going to be appointing pro-life Supreme Court justices, pro-life justices to the federal bench, which is, is exactly what we need to see happen. And he's not backing away from his pro-life views. When when politicians and then any elected official put their head in their stand or try to back away from their pro-life views, it always spells disaster for them because the abortion industry is a bully. 
and they will bully you. Exactly they will right. chase you down. Just what I told my kids, you can never run for a bully. You have to stand up to bullies. And he knows this. I mean, he, he was there in Washington, D.C. for four years with these bullies. He, uh, he gets that. And I was, I was excited by his statement today. And what my thought after I watched it was, game on. Let's go. Now is the time to recruit and mobilize as many young people as we can across the country to get out to knock doors and to show America what President Trump is standing for, which is life and families, and what Joe Biden and his administration is standing for, which is more abortion up until the moment of birth, no limits, and taxpayer funded. That is that is so smart. And th- Donald Trump also said, hey, remember, they're they're the extremists on this issue. That's right. And if That's there's right. anyone that could play offense on an issue, it's him. Chris, how could people support you? Tell Talk about Students for Life, about a minute remaining, your great podcast. Tell everyone sure. about it. Yeah, you can go to studentsforlife.org or studentsforlifeaction.org. Make a donation uh, to our work to mobilize pro-life young people to get out, uh, to knock on doors, to change minds on campuses. We're registering kids on college campuses. We're turning out kids to vote, making chasing the ballot on college campuses. Uh, so we have a lot of work to do. We change minds of pro-choice voters for about $12 a student. So love to have folks support. Follow my podcast anywhere you get your podcast at Explicitly Pro-Life. I got to tell you, the work you guys do is effective. We see so many young people say, I I follow Students for Life. I'm part of it. It's excellent work. Uh, Very supportive. Keep up the great work, Chris, and thank you so much. Thank you, Charlie. Thanks, Turning Point, for all that Turning Point does. Thank you. Talk to you soon. She's great. I I tell you, she is one of the most important pro-life voices in the country, and um, I agree complete with her commentary.